Um, yes, so welcome to the session um, about studying at Pacific University. Um, I would like to introduce um, Stephen Prague, who um, works in the International Office at Pacific University. And um, also you will see on, um, well, under Freya, they're all on the same computer, um, students who um, studied abroad at Pacific University last year. Um, I'd like to hand over um, to Stephen, if that's okay, and please, you know, um, if anybody has any questions, um, please put them in the chat or raise your hand um, and we can answer them after um, Stephen has um, given you information about the amazing opportunity to study at Pacific. So I'll hand it over to you. Okay, so um, I've been at Pacific for, what, 18 years now. We started uh, this program in 2007 or 8, I think. So. It's been the most popular and amazing program of all of our study abroad options. Um, so I'm really happy to be doing this. Um, can I can I share screen? Yes, you're a co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this this presentation, and then we'll we'll uh, be happy to take questions after that. Okay. Uh, can you all see that? Not yet, I'm afraid. Oh, hold on. Let's go, let's go back. Share screen, okay. Is that looking good? Uh, yeah, there, oh, yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay, right, so I'm gonna start my slideshow here. Okay, so. Pacific University uh, is the second oldest university west of the Mississippi, believe it or not. Uh, we were uh, beaten by two weeks by Willamette University, just um, 40 miles to, to the south of us. Uh, but we've been around at least by US standards for quite a long time. Um, we have 4,000 students of whom uh, 2,000 of them are graduates are undergraduates and we have two campuses. Um, the one you would be at is our main uh, historic campus in Forest Grove, which is where our undergraduate college is. Um, one of our signature points is we have small classes, 19 to 20 students per class on average. Some of them have uh, less than that. And we are in a small town, but we're close to Portland. Um, so that's one of the uh, really attractive aspects of Pacific is that we are a traditional, what we call red brick liberal arts campus, um, where, you know, which is a residential campus where you get to really immerse yourself in the life of the campus. Uh, but we also are close to Portland and we're on the, uh, public transport system for Portland. Uh, so you get, you get to have uh, the small town, traditional red brick uh, liberal arts college in a, in a, in a smallish town, but you're also close to the big city. Um, so the campus is beautiful. The state is beautiful. We'll, we'll go into that in a, in a, in a minute. Uh, so uh, we're between San Francisco and Seattle. Uh, so it's a wonderful location for getting around the West Coast. We're also uh, a little bit north of Seattle is Vancouver, which is an amazing place to visit. Um, and about 80 minutes, as I said, on public transport from Portland. Uh, so these, these are some pretty pictures. Uh, it's downtown uh, pictures at the top and then that's Mount Hood. This is a spectacular part of the country. Mount Hood, uh, which is a volcano, but we don't have to worry about it. It's done anything for quite a long time. Um, and, um, and that's taken from the Japanese garden, I'm sure. So these are pictures of Pacific. That's uh, the main uh, administrative building, uh, Marsh Hall, uh, where all the really important people hang out. Um, I don't have an office in there. Not uh, yet. <laughs> right. And, and so, 
So these are the, I mean, we have so many things to choose from. So for York students um, over the years, uh, media arts has been, so film and TV production, we've had quite a few media arts students. Um, we've had, uh, of late, we've had students in sports science, uh, although I think now you're sending lots of people to Canada, but we would love to get three or four of them. But we have had uh, groups of three or four in the past. Um, and, and sports science is one of the biggest programs at Pacific. Um, other areas that have been interesting, uh, we've had students in linguistics because of a connection um, that we've had between um, uh, a couple of faculty members uh, in York and at Pacific. Um, so one of the, the things I would say is, oh, the other, the other area is theater um, as well. So and we've had students from American uh, studies and history as well from York. So lots of, lots of classes to choose from um, and, you know, really uh, comprehensive, uh, comprehensive uh, range of options. So teaching style, yes, small classes, as I mentioned in the States, there tends to be more of a focus on, on participation. Um, and so that, that's usually expected in, in most classes here. Um, high level of student involvement inside and out, outside of the class. Um, and I already mentioned some of this stuff, approximately 25 of our students, 25% uh, of our students study abroad every year. Housing, we have seven residence halls on campus. Um, you may have an American roommate. Um, so some rooms are single, some are doubles. Um, I know for a lot of Brits, sharing a room can be uh, downright frightening. Um, but here in the, in the States, it's quite normal and it can be a really positive part of the experience. Um, where you'll be placed, um, depends on where housing places you. Um, and um, one or two of the options will have a, a meal plan requirement. Otherwise you can, you can decide whether you're on the meal plan or not. Um, and then we will pick you up at the airport. Everyone uh, gets an airport pickup when you arrive. So these are the residence halls. They range from traditional ones um, been around for quite a long time to uh, newer ones. So we actually have done a lot of building over the last few years. So um, the one in the largest picture, Gilbert Hall, is one of our newest and finest, but uh, the ones at the bottom are also our newest ones, whereas these other two at the top uh, have been around for quite a long time. Um, so there is certainly more of a, a move uh, on US campuses to provide a range of uh, residence hall accommodation. Um, okay. Student life. Okay, one of the things that's really interesting about Pacific is we have a, a strong connection to Hawaii, which uh, I'm sure most of you know is actually an American state, but about 20 to 25% of our undergraduate student body comes from Hawaii. So what's really nice about that is you'll probably make friends from Hawaii. And then one of these days, if you're lucky, you might get to visit them. Um, but, um, and every year, if you come in spring, we have a, a, a luau, which is a, a traditional Hawaiian celebration uh, with lots of dancing um, and, uh, you know, we usually have, it's always uh, 3,000 people that fill our basketball auditorium, although obviously we're not putting 3,000 people together in, in one place these days, but hopefully when, uh, by the time you come, um, we'll have a, a, our wonderful luau will be back. Um, okay, more pretty pictures of the campus, Marsh Hall again. Uh, this building on the right is Old College Hall, which is our original college building. It's been around since um, 1849. 
um, when Pacific started as a as a, a, a college or a school for orphans. Um, more pretty pictures. We have wonderful gigantic trees on campus. And so um, it really is, uh, sometimes you feel you're in, a, you're in a film about a traditional college, you know, in the, in the fall and the spring, um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful on campus. Uh, on the right there is the, is the library, which we built a decade ago, and we're very proud of that. It's a very nice building. Okay, Oregon. Why would you want to come to Oregon? Well, it's definitely a, an extremely scenic state, famous for its forests, clean air, clean water, and green technology. Um, it's culturally, it's very interesting. It's one of the most liberal states in 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 America. So this, this is not Trump country, at least unless you go east of the, of the Cascade Mountains. But the area around Portland, where most of the population is, is hyper liberal, um, very focused on the environment. Uh, often a term that's used to refer to Oregonians is tree huggers, uh, because we really like our trees and our and, and our environment. Okay, so these are uh, some iconic pictures of Oregon. This is uh, Multnomah Falls on the left, which everyone will go to. Um, it's one of the biggest tourist attractions. And then the, the beach at Cannon Beach with these wonderful, they call sea stacks sticking out of the, um, the sea. And then we've got Mount Hood. And one of the great things you can do at Pacific, now uh, we have uh, a, a department called Outback and they organize very cheaply uh, weekend trips uh, into the mountains, kayaking, uh, all kinds of things. So it really gives you the, uh, the chance to experience the state uh, without having to fork out a lot of money and to really get to, to experience the natural environment. And again, more, more pretty pictures. At the bottom, Crater Lake, the deepest lake in America and, and Oregon's only national park. Um, and then at the top is the Columbia Gorge, uh, which is uh, really close to Portland, which is uh, where you would go on the way to Mount Hood um, or to Multnomah Falls. And that is the iconic Oregon coast uh, beach photo. Uh, in Cannon Beach. And so this very brief presentation, I'm going to end it. It's one thing listening to a 60 year old guy telling you uh, how wonderful it is, especially when it's part of his job. But in the words of a former student from York, uh, Max Atherby, and I'm just going to read this. I think it's a really uh, nice quote and it's not the, the normal cookie cutter um, a study abroad quote about uh, how wonderful everything is. Um, okay, so everyone's idea of paradise is different, but I found mine. I've never had better teachers who are able to get the best work out of me in classes uh, that are the definition of excellent. All this whilst making some of the best friends of my life, in the words of the American icon, Woody Guthrie, uh, this is as, just as close to heaven as my traveling feet have been. Uh, the very best advice I can give you for your own exploration of the Beaver State is to say yes, yes to opportunities, yes to exploration, and yes to Oregon. Uh, you will only realize how much you miss something once it's gone. And uh, Max was here. I think it actually was uh, quite transformative for him. Um, and then he showed up again, which often happens. Students come for an exchange and they'll show up as a semester or two or a year or two later on campus uh, because they've made lots of friends just want to come back. And that is about it. So any questions? 
Thank you for that, Stephen. Um, I just want to obviously, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat or raise your hands. But I'm just going to go over to um, the um, Study Abroad Ambassadors for Pacific, who obviously went um, this time last year. Um, very different the world was this time last year. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to um, maybe talk about your experience or give any tips for anybody who is interested in studying at Pacific and how you found your experience. It's putting you on the spot there, guys, but you know. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll go from like right from the start. So the application is a lot of stuff you have to do, and it seems like a lot, but when you sort of break it down, it all is all quite similar. Yeah. So it might feel quite daunting, but you're basically doing the same thing for just lots of different departments. So it looks complicated, but it is much easier than it than it seems. Um, flights, flights are fine. Yeah. It was. Just, I think you're just so excited and nervous that you don't really notice. Yeah anything like when you're going over there um I was just gonna say I feel like with flights because I didn't know anybody um I don't think you did either did the going out so I didn't know anyone that was actually going to Pacific I mean we had a group chat but we haven't met had we so I feel like trying to find I know Jess will probably help with that just trying to find people that are going to the same university with you that did help because then we met at the airport didn't we and then literally we, we were just we clicked so quickly and yeah now we're, living, we're all living together so it's like yeah just trying to find connections before you fly out so that you feel more at ease but yeah yeah um with the the quote from max the the friends thing the friends for life thing the first week of getting to pacific we did so many really really cool things to study abroad team mm. um, we went to Mon uh, monoma falls yeah, and yeah lots of different places but that makes you bond with the people that you're with so yeah. well and then when you the next week when you go into your classes you're sort of more confident because you've bonded with like a group of other international students that when you meet new people yeah. from your classes it's really easy just to sort of get along with everyone I think mm -hmm. um, definitely for me I mean I made a lot of friends out there but I sort of made friends with the people I went with these lovely yeah. people and some <laughs> others um, I don't think university would be as amazing it is right now if I haven't met them um definitely definitely changed yeah. my experience out there and my experience here I'm just gonna charge my laptop I think you're gonna go get a tissue because you're emotional <laughs> classes um the classes are very very different I don't know about because yes. I have English classes they were quite quite different but I think the approach that York St John has or most English universities have to classes with like big lectures mm. um like students and it's so so different because it's so much smaller and the teachers are sort of spend more time with individual people mm. so you, you sort of get to get to have a different way of learning that does tend to be more work weekly I found those weekly responses and weekly like assignments that you actually they weren't difficult and they weren't like big but they were weekly things rather than here you have one assignment for the end of the year and that's it so yeah you're definitely more involved with the work that you're doing because you have to do it more often but the work that you have to do isn't oh, very difficult yeah yeah it's not quite the like academic papers that you might have to write here it's a lot more like uh reviews on classes and <laughs> like, <laughs> um i don't know i think yeah i think the sanity is coming home yeah. definitely after you've had such an amazing experience and you've made all the friends you've made and then you have to come home oh but it's at least yeah it's upsetting but I would not ever, ever, ever change it for anything. No, I wouldn't either. Like, best experience of my life. Yeah. Same. Miss every second of watching the PowerPoint. Yeah. But the trees. <laughs> yeah, and oh. seeing all the accommodation. We were like, oh, it's Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Yeah. And the trees are massive. They are. Really <laughs> 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 the first thing that we like, the trees. trees are so big. Like, when I first got there, the two pictures I sent to my family were getting off the plane and the trees, which is the caption, the trees are massive. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, but it's it's a whole different world, but it is amazing. It is so amazing. If I could go back, I'd do it in an instant. Yeah. Um, we've got a question um, from Jack. Um, just wondering, I haven't heard anyone mention health insurance or healthcare, so I'm just wondering what the approach from previous students was. Um, I don't know who wants to answer that. Um, yeah, I can answer, yeah. Um, okay, so the, the university give you uh, insurance. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they gave us an insurance card for that state only. Um, if you want to travel somewhere else, which was what my general plan was, um, I got an insurance, I can't quite remember what it's called, but I could definitely put the link in somewhere where other people can see it. Um, I think it cost me £80 pounds 
or 70 pounds, no, 70 pounds. And it covered me for the whole time I was, it covers you for a year, for 12 months, even if you're not there for a year. And it covers you for every state. So whatever happens, however much it costs, that insurance covered everything because um, you have your national insurance number. So yeah, we also had the, the insurance from the university, but I wanted to have it, well, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, really the way so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I definitely got my. I took my own one out. Um, I can put the link for what that was. Did you get yeah. the one with the technology as well? Yeah. You yeah. 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 So my insurance had me personally for any injury I had, and you could put up to six devices on it. So if while I was out with well, my laptop broke, that was covered under that insurance as well. I think I think it was seventy for the, the health one and eighty if I wanted to add yeah. the um, devices, which I did. Nothing broke, but it was just having yeah. that. Reassurance that it did, case. I couldn't, I could get. Yeah, um, I'm not sure where you are with it, but basically, we waived the Pacific insurance because it's quite expensive, and yeah. basically got our own. Yeah, yeah. We, it was just our own research with that. Yeah, I'm not sure. If... Just to add to that as well, so yeah, York St John University have our own university insurance, and you will be automatically added into that free of charge before you go. And um, but as they said, it does only cover you for the period that you are in the state at Pacific. So if you do want to go travelling, which you know please do like go everywhere and um, it is worth getting your own um, insurance like like the students just said um, and our insurance does cover obviously for most you know get, get insurance that um, you know suits you and what you want to do and what you need to do um, there's another question from Chloe how does choosing classes work for exchange students can we choose from any from the list or is it related to our course um, so yeah, it's, it's related to your course I'm afraid from a York St John perspective and um, you can only do classes that are related to your course and um, we have an academic advisor who will sit with you before you go and help you pick your courses to make sure that um, you are taking stuff that is relevant to your course and that you know it's going to really enrich your academic experience and um, how different did you guys find the courses did you find them you know quite similar interesting a bit different or um, I so me and Luke are both studying linguistics, um, English language and linguistics, and I did. You did. What did you? What, what was the one that you did different to me? Audiology. So that's something that we don't actually do in, in English language and linguistics at York St John. So did you? Did you find it interesting? Audiology? I did. Very, yeah. very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, it's just. Yeah, it's it's related, but obviously different to what you can do at, at York St John. Yeah. Um, and then we both did speech and language. Yeah, it was like communication science and disorders. That's what it was. Yes. And now in third year, we're both studying speech and language therapy. And I feel like that's doing mm -hmm. the um, communication science and disorders. It's helped us like um, ease into speech and language therapy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I took English literature, and I ended up with a course that didn't really match with English literature very well. It was more geography based which it was American geography. So for me, I was very confused <laughs> for the first lesson. I didn't, I mean, I probably could have learned it quite easily, but I'm not very good at geography. So I, I think I went to a woman called Heidi and she showed me the other options for my course. Um, a lot of them are creative. Some of them are more purely literature based. Um, but if you get there, if you pick a course that you think sounds interesting when you're here and you get out there and try it and think actually I'm not enjoying this or this isn't quite what I thought it was going to be you can go and stop it very easily like they're really accommodating yeah as long as there's space in that class they'll happily put you in there yeah um, I think I came to you Stephen because I think I had a couple of issues with mine I remember us sorting it out in the first week so mm. yeah but yeah if you if you pick something that you think sounds interesting but you don't quite like it or it's just not matching with you it's really quite easy and everyone's lovely about changing it like it's yeah. literally not a problem so yeah i mean the, 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 there is a, a two-week period after the beginning of the classes they call the ad drop period that you can it's totally normal students are changing classes frequently during that period great thank you and um, some more questions with accommodation do you get placed in a halls at random or do you get to pick a preference uh, so oh, this, this is <laughs> carry on. Um, we got we got assigned accommodation. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, I had a small problem with mine, so I emailed. Um, I think I got ended up getting put with a boy, and I wasn't I wasn't particularly comfortable about that just because I thought new country sharing a room also with a boy. Uh, I was like, oh, maybe not. So I emailed, and again, they swapped it really quickly. Put with someone else. They were like, do you have a preference? I was like, just maybe a, maybe a girl for me. Um, and they swapped me, I think it was in a, 
have two or three days at Emo back and swapping, but you don't get to pick the accommodation you're in. You just get like so certain preferences. Th there is a form when you're filling out what accommodation you want and it'll ask roughly whether you're wanting what kind of, yeah. kind of suite, but it, it won't, you won't get to choose the exact building or yeah. it's, it's more general. Um, I've been. This is from Elliot. Um, I've been reading about home study abroad for a while, and I've heard a lot about meal plans. Could you give me more of an insight whether to any meal plans are available and how these work? Oh, meal plans. But then you had a different one to me. Um. So yeah, if you are, it depends on your accommodation. If you have accommodation which doesn't have a kitchen, then you will automatically be put on the meal plan. Um, I think how much it is. It's quite expensive, but <laughs> it does do you meals for every day yeah, yeah. I got it yeah I got it and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I got it in hindsight yeah. but yeah. it you can waive it if you have a kitchen in your accommodation but the one that we had I mean we we got the was it for I thought 600 no it was 50 it was for 600 dollars oh I can't remember because I thought we had 300 the meals 50. and then three oh, definitely 50 and then we had three hundred dollars on the card. So you have this thing called a uh, you have box of box, which is uh, like yeah. on the card, and you can pick like different types of meal plans, have different prices and, and whatnot. So we had a fifty mil meal plan um, that I think cost five hundred dollars and had three hundred dollars on the card that you could spend in the shop and on the Starbucks. So I had like money that you could use on campus. Um, I think fifty worked for me. I don't think yeah, I would have eaten definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't have eaten the whole. Plan, but I had a kitchen, so I had the choice to waive that. So we'd go yeah. to Walmart or Safeway, um, to the supermarkets that are quite close, and then sort of eat in our houses and then in the canteen if we decided. Yeah. But the food's quite quite cool. Like it changes yeah. a lot. There's always different there's sort of, options. Yeah, there's like some kind of Hawaiian food, and there's always yeah, there's always pizza, there's always which is pizza. quite cool. It's like something that you can if you're not feeling anything else, there's always pizza that you can go to. Yeah. Which is definitely a favourite for me. Always, for there's always the salad bar as well. Um, then they have like the like burgers and sort of like hot food, hot food at the back of the yeah. and then like desserts and things and tater tots I just oh, discovered the tater, tater tots they're amazing they're really hungry so much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not having to cook for yourself is is pretty great yeah for sure yeah thank you um, a question from Sarah. For the modules on my course, would they be different for what they would be at York if I was to study abroad? Um, what I will say from this from a, a York St. John perspective is it's not different. So we do make sure there's a reason we partner with Pacific and that's because obviously the modules that you will do meet kind of the learning objectives that you need in order to get your degree. Um, but how you go about them might be a little bit different. And um, so the students might be able to, you know, like they mentioned, it might be a little bit different. It might be a bit more relevant to the academics research there or to the country. But I would say that they're definitely enriching. So some students worry that they might miss out on something um, if they were studying at York St. John. But I see it as completely enriching your academic experience and kind of giving you something that the rest of your cohort here won't have. So, you know, people do their dissertation based on maybe what they learned abroad. It might shape your future. As cliche as it sounds, it might really kind of shape how you see your academics. Um, I don't know, students, ambassadors, if you have anything to add to that, or did you find it overly different or? I, oh, sorry. No, you go first. So on the dissertation thing, I had a class on fairy tales that was, my teacher was Kathleen. It was the best class I've ever taken in my whole life, my whole school life ever. Um, it was, yeah, looked at things completely differently from a different perspective. I'd never sort of thought about looking at academic work before. Um, and now my dissertation is about fairy tales and about a lot of what, what I learned in that class. So having not taken that class and gone abroad, I've absolutely no idea what my dissertation would be on. I'd, I'd probably be a little bit less excited about it than I am. But yeah, best class I think I've ever had. It was run, it was run, so you had um, to do like a five minute presentation at the end of the class just to like solidify what you'd learned. Um, but it was with a group and it was always well prepared and I think it made me much more confident to talk in front of groups of people now because I was like really nervous about the presentation thing to start with but after you do it sort of every week it literally it's like the easiest thing to do it's like okay cool presentation now um I was gonna say I did um so I I'm doing linguistics and I did one of my modules in America was educational linguistics so if there's any first years doing like linguistics now, you'll um, you'll be doing grammar in second semester of first year. And it's very similar to that. So I feel like that was something similar to me, something that I knew 
about already. Um, trying to think phonetics as well, because we were meant to do phonetics in first semester of second year at ISJ, but obviously because we were in America, we did phonetics over there. So yeah, it is, it is similar to what you do at York St. John. Yeah. Um, I think just similar to what Jess said, about yeah. it being, there will be some different topics about what you'll study, but it's all the same. It'll all help to your overall degree. Yeah. Because it'll be relevant skills and yeah. planning out. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Isaac, when and where do we go about getting and filling out forms? This will be a good, out time, good time to say that um, if you are interested in applying, you have to have a compulsory tutorial with um, myself or the rest of the study abroad team. Um, you can do this through Launchpad Online and we will talk to you about the timeline and the process. Um, don't worry, the application isn't open until the 1st of December um, and then you won't look at applying to Pacific until next year. Um, so um, definitely book a tutorial um, and then we can talk to you in more detail about the forms and the process and things that you need to do. Um, Leah says, is there a way to see our course list? If you go on our website, there is a link um, to the Pacific module catalogue. Um, so please have a look. Um, modules may change from semester to semester and from year to year. So it's good to use it as kind of a guide um, to see what could be available to you. Um, if you have any problems, um, please give us an email on our study abroad inbox and we can um, send you it. Um, but that's probably the best way to kind of see what courses are available. Um, Abby says, is the uni experience such as accommodation, meal plans, etc., a lot more than it is comparing it to York? I presume you mean cost wise? How, how did you find managing your finances abroad? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't really finances were it wasn't a big issue really but I don't know if that's because I, I saved up or... yeah I think it's, it's definitely worth saving up before you're going especially yeah. if you're wanting to, to travel, travel, travel and yeah. do things I mean you've got Christmas in between your application some of you might have birthdays so yeah. I definitely ask for money yeah um it's yeah I think if you want to travel make sure you're saving something because it's it, it's a lot cheaper I'd say to travel definitely yeah. definitely cheaper to travel when you're out there rather than thinking, oh, I'd, li I'd like to go to New York and then doing it when you've come home because the flight's going to be more, yeah, and, and accommodation will be probably more as well if you're booking it from here. But. but in terms of, like, the meal plan and stuff, like, we thought it was quite expensive, didn't we? But I think, yeah, I oh, think it's food worth is it. quite expensive. Yeah. We didn't, but I, from my experience, like, I had the meal plan where you didn't, you didn't have to have the meal plan if you didn't want to because I had a kitchen in my accommodation, but I rarely used it because... Mm -hmm. I was always at the UC, like getting food from, from the canteen. Yeah. yeah, the UC is a good place to sit and study as well. Do you work with yeah. like booths that you can sit in and sort of tables um, around? So we tend to we tend to spend a lot of time in there working. And yeah. then as you're already in there, you then go and, and get food. Yeah, but it's a lot easier. I think it's a lot easier because if you're sharing a kitchen with lots of people, or well, not lots of people, I think it's about max six. six. Yeah, about well, five others. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I think it's easier in general just to go to the UC because everyone does. So, yeah. you know, when you make friends, or they might say, oh, do you want to come to the UC for dinner? Because everyone's going. It's just easier to do yeah. that, for sure. But yeah, financially, I, I'd save yeah. up. Um, yeah. But it, it, it is doable on a budget. Just if you really want to enjoy yourself, I'd have to certainly save up. Yeah. I don't think I spent that much on things in general. I mean, we went into Portland mm -hmm. quite a lot, but then it's... How, how traveling to Portland works is you, it's five dollars for the whole day and that covers train and bus so if you're going places it's really not expensive I would say no traveling um yeah if you're staying like within like if you're going to Portland yeah which is I think Portland's like the end end of that line, end of that that line yeah. yeah but even when we went um so me and Frey went to uh, Disneyland and I think that all together was four hundred dollars. Yeah. For the the plane, getting to the airport, getting back from the airport, the hotel, yeah, and the the place itself. So it's not expensive to travel. I would say it's not yeah. the expensive thing. But, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, this is maybe a question for you, Stephen. Um, is there a lot of support in terms of mental health, and would I be able to use a learning support plan like I'm now at YSJ? So from a YSJ perspective, and um, what we do is we, with your um, permission, we do ask um, to see your learning support plan, um, and then with your permission, we do send it over to Pacific, um, and then obviously make them aware of any support needs that you have. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about Stephen, what support is available to students. I mean, yeah. So that's we we've had. Uh, learning support plans for, for students in the past. We do have a, um, a student disability services coordinator. Uh, so it's, it's part of the, the normal service that Pacific offers. We also have a, 
um, a, a, a full service a student counseling center. Um, and that's for free, I think the first 10 visits. So uh, absolutely, uh, it's, it's happened several times in the past um, that we have students that need some uh, accommodations and the university is all set up for it. Um, you just need to, to contact me and then we'll, we'll just work it out. Uh, and, and what typically I'll do is put you in, in touch with a disability support services coordinator and then we'll get it resolved. So yes, that shouldn't be uh, a worry at all. Um, we're, we're very good with that kind of thing. No, you've, we've definitely sent students in the past with learning support plans and you know, they're, they're very, they feel very supported um, by Pacific. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, we work together to, to try and help you, you know, have a, a comfortable experience and kind of a comfortable transition um, with that. Um, I don't think there's any more questions in the chat. Um, so um, thank you everybody for joining. Um, this is recorded, so um, it will be available to view. Um, some really great information um, available for you guys. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact the ambassadors at any time. I'm just gonna nominate you guys again. Um, their contact details are at the bottom of our website for the Pacific page. Um, and obviously, if you are interested um, in this great opportunity, um, like I said, please book an appointment uh, through Launchpad Online and um, we will be sending a survey out so um, the link will also be there um, and I'll be really excited to talk to you about the next steps and um, for applying to Pacific and um, how to have um, your kind of start your life changing journey and um, thank you I will stop recording